Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Mike, KM5MD. Okay, and it is this. I have a question about radials for a raised vertical antenna. Now, what he means by raised vertical antenna is it's up off the ground. The base is not sitting on the ground. What is the optimum length, number, and height of raised radials for a vertical antenna? For example, a mast-mounted DX commander. In your experience or knowledge, how is the performance of a raised vertical antenna with elevated radials compared to that of a ground-mounted vertical with buried radials? Thank you for your videos and especially your dedication to sharing and teaching us all things related to ham radio 73 is from Mike. Well, thank you for the compliment. I appreciate that. Okay, let's let's look at a couple things cuz first of all, can you raise a vertical antenna in the air? Absolutely you can. However, if this is a vertical and let's suppose it's multiband, the DX commander is multiband and you can choose which bands you put on it, but might as well do 40 through 10. If you do a little L out here, you can even get 80. Although personally, I don't care for the 80 meter band, but a lot of people do. Okay, if this is raised on a house or something like that, you need two radials, two times, and I will say the 40 meter radials. So these have got to be a quarter wavelength, right? So 40 meters, 20 meters, that's 10 meters is a quarter equals about 33 feet. Okay, and another 33 foot over here. Now that covers one band. It also covers 15, but that's okay. Now you put radials out this way and these are for let's say 20 meters okay you need these to be a quarter wavelength on that so they're five meters or about 16 feet so on on either side for each band you need two radials okay usually these are drawn out straight they don't need to be drawn out straight. If you kind of lower them just a little bit, you can raise the feed point impedance a little bit. The feed point impedance of a classic vertical is about 30 ohms, so which is about a 1.6 to 1 SWR. And you use your transceiver's built-in antenna tuner to take care of that. There's your vertical antenna. Now, Remember rule, is it two? Rule two for antennas? I should write these down. Rule two for antennas is that height matters. Okay, so getting it up in the air, will it give you a better signal? Yes, somewhat. You'll get a somewhat better signal. Now, if your only option is to put it on the ground and sort of bury it between buildings, then obviously you want it up high. But if you are living in a suburban area where there's just trees and grass and bushes and stuff like that, or out here where I live, scrub, um, then uh, ground mounting is fine, and you can do that. Now, this works, okay? Now, I point out that I have heard, and someone will correct me if I'm doing this wrong, because DX Commander Aficionados are a um, highly verbal lot, okay? Um, I have heard that Callum recommends mounting the DX Commander on the ground, and I do too. Um, the DX Commander has no mounting bracket to be put up on a mast, okay? It's designed to just literally sit on the ground, and then you've got three pieces of rope to kind of hold it up. It's really almost designed to be a portable antenna. And then your radials, um, from my experience, you can have radials of 
rather random length, uh, as my uh, step IR vertical has, and those work fine. So you can <coughs> keep adding radials. It is said that more shorter radials are better than fewer longer radials. I would say 20 feet maybe. We built the DX Commander with 10 feet and it heard it had very good ear. It hears just fine uh, with that. We ground mounted it. And that's quite a few of those radials down there. We had eight radials mounted to each little screw on thing so they could be taken off uh, very easily and put together. Now, you mentioned in here buried radials. And that immediately set off a flag in my mind. When I first put in my 14 AVQ, when we first moved down here, which is a multiband vertical, it's ground mounted, and under the ground I had buried radials. I had uh, 12 of them, I think. And then they were about six inches down, bare copper. Let me tell you from this, don't do that. Now, some people will be vehement on this about using bare radials. I recommend insulated radials. Go down to Home Depot or, well, of course, the, the uh, uh, DS Commander antenna comes with a spool of wire to be used as radials, and you can actually order an extra spool uh, which I did at the time that uh, I bought it, which was like two, three years ago. Okay, Or you can go down to Home Depot or Lowe's, your favorite electrical supply store, and buy a roll, 500-foot roll, of like uh, 12 or 14 gauge stranded, it'll be seven strands, insulated, you can pick the color, just a single wire, and uh, so if it's 500 feet and you pick 20 radials, they'll be 25 feet long, okay? And that can put out a nice radial. Now, regarding burying those radials, make it less, preferably much less, than 2 inches, okay? Which is, what, 50 millimeters or 5 centimeters. Okay, the depth. Please, don't put them down low because they start to act like ground rods rather than radials. A word to use here is counterpoise. There's a lot of definitions of the word counterpoise. Uh, the ones that are in the dictionary tend to say a counterpoise is in essence a tuned radial for a vertical antenna. Um, it's used in many, um, many, many um, contexts. Okay. I would recommend putting your radials on the surface. Again, insulated radials on the surface. You can purchase what are called lawn staples. They're about this big and look like that. They're just a bent piece of wire. And you press these in every few feet to kind of hold the radials down flat if you want to. Now, where I have my antennas, there's no lawn. So I just lay them on the surface. If you do this with a lawn, in a season or two, the lawn will grow over the radials and you can mow right over them. Of course, if one of these staples is sticking up or something, push it back down, okay? You don't want to cut your radials. And I recommend the use of insulated radials because the voltage at the end of them becomes quite high. It's the same as the voltage at the top of the antenna. And uh, so you don't want kids or anything like that running into that while you're operating. Um, <clears throat> So, the other thing I would do if this is going to be a permanent installation, here's your DX commander, here's your radials. By the way, these radials do not 
have to have a specified length. We did 10 feet. I don't know how my assistant came up with 10 feet from the instructions. I read the instructions and came up with 20 feet. But he did it with 10, about 30 of these around here, and it worked really well. Um, now, again, there is no um, clamp or anything on the bottom of this. You've got to put ropes, get UV resistant rope. You can get, if you look in, in CQ magazine, you can get UV resistant um, guy rope. Uh, it's like a 3 8 or something like that. You can get a 500 foot roll for 50, 80 bucks, something like that. It's worth it because it's UV resistant. We've used non-UV resistant rope just for testing and then the thing gets left up for a long time and the next thing you know the radials break or the uh, ropes break. Okay so that will hold it up. You've got your radials down here which don't have to be any particular length. I'd go with your reading of the instruction manual. Okay and put these on the surface, use lawn staples to hold them down. If you must put them in the ground, if you must get a pizza cutter, you will ruin the pizza cutter in the process of doing this. So don't ask your uh, significant other for one, but something about this deep like this with a handle on it, a sturdy one, and cut a path in the lawn and push the wire down in to the, the insulated wire down into that little groove that the pizza cutter makes. You'll have to be laying this down. That opening is not going to stay that way for very long. And you're going to have to use a stick to push it down, but use a little pizza cutter and then that way they're already below the surface and you can mow over the top of them. Do you need to do anything with the ends of the radials? I really don't think so. Unless you've got very, very dry brush, then you can put a little wire nut over the end of each one in case of any arcing. Okay, so there you go. I do not, repeat, do not like the idea of buried bare radials. Because what you're making is not a radial system, but a ground system and they will not act as a counterpoise to the antenna whereas if you keep them on the surface and keep them insulated they will act as a proper counterpoise to the antenna. Now you can still go ahead and bury a ground rod there which we did with the step IR big IR vertical antenna. There's a ground rod down there that makes that very thoroughly grounded and then we have the radials down there and the antenna and it is guide up on top. We need some severe winds here. So, um, and it works beautifully. It's a wonderful antenna. So there you go, Mike. I hope that is of some help to you. If any of you out there would like to help support this channel, go to decastlercom support and uh, you can pick either Patreon or a couple ways of set up on PayPal. Anything is appreciated and uh, my assistant will send you a thank you note for anything that you send in and if you have any questions uh, my assistant will come to me and get you the and we'll get you the answers um, so if you would like to ask a question to be answered in the ask dave column in qst please send that question to ask dave all one word lowercase at a r r l dot org not dot net org.org org okay i'll get that and um, not getting as many questions as i had hoped for that column so send something in that you think is fun and perplexing and we'll see what we can do with it so there you have it until we next meet 73